Hello, hello, hello guys, and welcome back to Joe's Adventures, and today we're going to be doing that Prehistoric Kingdom devlog. Here we've got devlog 35, which is for January 2021. So this is going to be the first one of the new year, and there's a lot to unpack on this one, so let's get into it. So, welcome to January's development update. Yeah. It's been a busy month here at Blue Meridian. Starting off 2021 with a bang, we launched our pre-alpha version of Prehistoric Kingdom to our VIP backers. Now, the alpha looming over the horizon, there's a lot of content to discuss. So that's pretty cool. Some of the other VIPs, and we've been having a play around. I haven't got a chance to play with it too much because of uh, just uh, camping, I went bird watching, and things like that. Just been a bit busy, and I've got coursework to do, but I'm really excited to get my hands on this. So yeah, state of development. With much excitement, our VIP backers have been playing the pre-alpha version of Prehistoric Kingdom. Over the last few days, they've been instrumental in helping us locate issues and provide feedback about the current state of the game. Surprising no, surprising no one, it turns out they're much better at building than us. Who would have thought? You'll be able to see some of their creations at the end of the blog post, and we'll go through that. On the development front, We've been hard at work polishing existing content and adding a bunch of new modular pieces like doors, glass, windows, and awnings. AI is coming along with some nice uh, new additions, and water continues to improve with more background work or on planier or planier or plain reflections. We've added lens snapping options for friends and paths too. This way, players can keep their shapes mathematically consistent while building. So here we can see the planier reflections. So it just looks like normal water reflections which is pretty cool so really starting to move into alpha which is pretty awesome but the stuff that's been worked on uh ai uh, behavior fence systems reflections just kind of everything you can check out yourself if you want to go through that so let's have a look at the development highlights so animal implementation ai and locomotion the team began work on integrating a variety of behaviors and animation states for the animals this past month. Idling, walking, running, resting, sleeping, and grazing are all integrated with support for eating, drinking, and socializing coming very soon. So that's going to be cool. For the hadrosaurs, we included a unique rearing behavior that allows the gentle giants to stand on their hind legs. From here, they can perform long-distance broad calls that are audible from across the park. So that'll be really cool to hear, even if you're building somewhere else, you can hear your dinosaurs calling to each other and having fun. And we just gotta have a look at the screenshot. I really like this one. Look at that. That's wonderful. You can see the night and you see a couple of regalas hanging out and having fun. So yeah, let's see what other screenshots we have. I forgot to pick up that one, but we'll go next. Okay. When it comes to locomotion, animals now curve their walking path around obstacles like fences to reach their destination. Rather than relying on animation, the body bends procedurally while the creature turns for more natural movement. So that's pretty cool. It's not something you have to directly animate, it's just procedural. To make our animals even more grounded, we use body and head IKs to ensure limbs stick to the terrain. And they look at things like pathing decorations, other creatures and buildings. So this is a really pretty uh, screenshot. I believe that's Regala uh, Anectens actually, the female. And I've got to say that's a beautiful screenshot. Ali, you did a good job. And now we've got individual variation. This was in the PAX demo, but this has kind of been slightly expanded here with the new models and such. By randomizing the hue, saturation, value, and size of an animal, each creature you breed in Prehistoric Kingdom is unique. So you can see here these are two different individuals, but they do look slightly different. You can see that the, I believe this one's slightly larger. You can see this one's slightly brighter as well. I think that looks really nice there. It's pretty awesome. There's a little bit of variation, you can see. It's just, I just think like that really adds a lot to the animals, gives them like more personality and really makes them stay, stay, uh, stand out from each other. So you could like look at a paddock and think, oh, okay, I know that animal. That's the animal I'm looking for. So that's pretty cool. The Edmont, uh, Edmontosaurus regalis above are both female, yet with small differences between them, goes a long way in breaking up large groups of animals. See, that's the big thing. You don't want to have all your animals looking the same. This has variation, which is pretty cool. Internally, we can control the, vari uh, the variation between amount between skin and sex, providing us lots of flexibility with variations. So that's pretty cool. So really, it's kind of each animal's going to be pretty much unique with different size parameters, different hues, 
different um it's just going to be it's very going to be very difficult with all these different factors and stuff to get the same animal twice so that's going to be pretty cool to see and then we've got audio so let's have a look base level audio implementation began early of january for the edmontosaurus and microraptor adding folding breaths um, and a handful of other sounds to the animations there's a lot of details we want to capture to bring these animals to life so while they're even more gradually still to implement please enjoy this early look at the microraptor so let's have a look at that is it 1080 it should be let's go That's so cute. Oh, I like that a lot. That was pretty cool. I think the cool thing about it was um, it isn't like your traditional like passerine bird calls or normal bird calls where it's like fluttering. It's kind of like a lot of lizard to it because the syrinx, which allows these birds, modern birds, to produce all these complex sounds, didn't evolve yet. So it's very likely they kind of used uh, hisses and things like that. And I think that sounds really awesome and pretty much what I expected a microraptor to sound like in life. So that's really cool. So. To help with the sheer amount of assets required, we split animal audio into two parts, vocals and family sets. By doing this, we're able to produce a large amount of reusable foley, breathing and generic sounds that are shaped per family of animals, etc. Hadrosaurs, uh, ceratopsians, mini aviaries, etc. So that it'll be able to break them up and be able to use them. On top of that base layer, we're able to create unique vocalizations that make up the character of the species. So it'd be kind of like... If you have a bunch of hadrosaurs, you can have a bunch of sounds that mean like when they're walking or when they're breathing, and then you can change it, but also you can change the implement different calls and uh, different like versions of calls and things to make the animals have their own personality. So that's pretty cool. So there's still uh, much work to be done. We can, however, uh, hope that you are just as excited to hear the animals as we are and to see them. So we definitely are. So here's a building showcase. This month we added two new small buildings to the game, increasing guest education needs. The information kiosk is a compact way to show visitors everything they need to know about your park. So I really like this little condensed uh, information. Let's have a look there. I think that looks wonderful actually. You can see a little, it's just cool and compact and cool. That I like. I really like the style of it. It's just simple, easy. So this will tell the guests where everything's going. And, you, and of course, there are going to be shells, I think. Or maybe not for this particular building, but there are going to be shells. And you can like build around them. So that's going to be pretty cool. It's like the park entrance. Uh, the restroom is the condensed version of its large variant. Starting players off with an affordable yet occupationally limited structure. Research per buildings are an important part of prehistoric kingdom's progression. So this is just your normal restroom. It's not as big as the family restroom. This just doesn't hold as many people. And I like the uh, little benches on there and the rubbish bins and little plants around there. And you see all the details like the sunroof and the um, air conditioning. I think that's really, really cool. So this is the normal restroom. And here's a picture comparing it to the family restroom, which obviously the largest one on the side here. And the smallest one is just the red uh, restroom that's been showed off here. And I think they both look incredible. I really like the more plant decorations and the larger roof that the family one has. So it'd be really cool to also get into that research progression because that'll be important because progression is probably one of the most important things in a video game and getting a good progression is really going to keep you bucked. So that's going to be awesome. So uh, designed to contain the most dangerous of creatures, the modern metal fence set has now been completed, ranging from 2.5, 4 and 6 meters tall all escapees are in for a shocking surprise. <laughs> so this kind of has a very uh, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World style to it, but it's clearly it's very much its own thing. 
So you can see this one in the um, right here is the smallest, that's 2.5 meters. This one's four, this one's six. So each animal will have their own ratings. This will be good for most animals. This will be good for also like larger animals like hadrosaurs, ceratopsians. And this will be good for like sauropods and large carnivores like Tyrannosaurus. So that'll be pretty cool. And I really like the design of these. It's very JP because obviously you can't touch any dinosaur building park simulator without having some inspiration from that. Just because it was such a formative franchise. And not just the book but the movies and all that. And uh, I think it's kind of got that line as, okay, it's pretty realistic. It's kind of like what you'd expect a zoo with animals the size of whales and uh, murder elephants on two legs. That's what you kind of expect them to have. So I think that looks really realistic and really awesome, and I can't wait to use them. But that's not just the only fence set we have got by looks of it. They're not as sturdy as their mental cattle parts. The modern wood fence are an essential part of the early game aesthetic. Coming in 1, 2.5, and 4 meter variants, these fences are suitable for weaker or less demanding animals. So this would be good for things like uh, Cetacosaurus, uh, a lot of those other smaller animals. So that's going to be really, really cool. So you can see this is a small 1 meter one. I suspect a lot of people are going to use this as sort of like a railing, because I think that looks really cool, like a cool railing. And then you have like a little, extra, little bit of space, and then the actual uh, fence or moat or whatever you want to use. And yeah, I really like this aesthetic of this one. It'd be really cool to have these with smaller animals. And if you do it right, maybe with bigger animals. It'd be really awesome. So here we've got a new animal. We've got the Animal Showcase. So dusting off its previous look, Protoceratops is roaring to go. The Sheepshide Critter is one of the smallest dinosaurs in Prehistoric Kingdom, lacking the most of the most complex facial features of other Ceratopsians. It may not be the most visually impressive, but it's definitely one of the coolest. So we can see here, this is a really nice skin. Oh, can't click on it, weird. There we got this one here. I think that looks wonderful. I just love the detail. Just look at that detail and see the glow up if you compare it to the old one. That just looks incredible. I love seeing all this detail. And I really love the skin too. I really love how the frill looks. I love that frill. And you can see the black and the yellow and orange i think that looks wonderful one of my favorite skins definitely awesome and now we've got pre-alpha showcase so our lovely vipens have been building breaking and testing the game in all manners to help us find issues and improve the game the feedback we've gotten so far has been great and the team cannot wait to launch alpha for the rest of the backers soon including three species of amogosaurus and a rest of the uh, construction suite, many of the VIPs have noticed just how easily the game was to learn and pick up. In a matter of hours, we started to see some fantastic builds. Please enjoy this wonderful paddock built by Strix. Uh, Strix. So you look at that. That is really cool. See, this is just one of those games you pick up. I, I've given it a play a little bit myself, and it's really just so much more intuitive than games, for example, like Planet Zoo. You can just kind of pick it up, learn it, and you can really play around and create wonderful things and this is a really nice enclosure kind of a spies uh reminds me of the uh zoo dallas zoo uh, giants of the savannah with the elephants and the giraffe mixed the habitat it gives me a lot of that inspiration we can see the use a lot of rock work and like dug it down to create like a sort of moat so you don't really need proper fences i really like this one here let's see that little thing there that looks wonderful. Here's a couple of nectins, a little shade structure on the back there. I think mean, that really looks wonderful. Yeah, this just looks like a real zoo. It's incredible. I just love like the idea of having uh, dinosaurs in like a modern zoo setting. And I can't wait to really build that and try and make the best habitats for my animals. And look at that shot. We can see there's one sleeping there. A couple females hanging around. I think they look wonderful. I really can't wait. It just looks it just it just looks incredible. It really does. I'm so excited to give this a look. That's just incredible. So yeah, throughout February, we have continued to add new content for the current build as well as providing alpha release dates next month. So yeah, here's the community spotlight. So here is the nice p pictures from my good friend, Adi. So we can see this is an Avery he made. So the Avery that holds the Microraptor is there's a null version, which means it kind of just has the... Uh, trees and stuff and the microraptor animations so you can basically build whatever you want around it and inside it so this is what he did he kind of set it to null and then he built this wonderful little aviary around it and i think it looks really cool it looks like 
really nice rounded edges. I really like that. Pretty awesome. And then we have this was created by Grimu. So this is like really inspired. You can see the Motosaurus there. You can see this wonderful river there. See buildings there. That looks really incredible. It looks like it just looks like a real zoo, and it's awesome. And then we can have Grimo. This one looks very Jurassic World to me. Let's see, is this one? Who did this one? Cannibalistic did this one. I like that one a lot. It gives me much JP vibes. I like this one too. It's another uh, different variation of what RD did. We can see this is the Avery's Null version. And you can see what it looks like at the inside with all the temperate rocks and plants and everything. It just really looks wonderful. You guys did a really good job. So all these VIPs, I, I, you've really done something great. You should feel proud of yourselves. So yeah, thank you for reading January's devlog. We await eagerly your feedback during our time in Alpha and are extremely excited to see what the player base will come up with. We're very happy with the results shown thus far and we can only expect to increase as new features and items will implement for everyone to play with. Until next time, the Prehistoric Kingdom team. So yeah, that was a bit of a smashing devlog and it's really awesome to finally see people get their hands on the game and really create something incredible. So. Oh, that's just wonderful. I really can't wait to get my uh, more into it. I really want to create something wonderful. But yeah, I really, really, really hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys like and subscribe, always remember to click that little bell icon in the corner there. So make sure you get notified whenever I learn anything. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys like and subscribe and bye-bye.